I had to pull these out just because of the occasion. I think once I'm done with this video, I'm going to pour one out for my boy Gohan. He's back. Okay, so before I get into the major part of the episode, which focuses on Gohan and Piccolo, I want to talk about the other scenes, like the scenes on the side that wasn't relevant to the Gohan and Piccolo stuff throughout this episode, because I want to get that out of the way, then I can just fanboy all over my boy Gohan being back. He's like, oh my god, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, let's talk about the Vegeta scene. So, there was a scene with Bulma, Vegeta, Trunks, Goten, Beerus, all them, and they were pretty much talking about like, oh, they're so laid back, you know, they're not really worried, which obviously because they don't really know anything. They don't know that the world's in jeopardy, the entire universe is at risk. They're unaware of it, like everyone basically is, and Beerus is like, maybe I should just go over there and tell Bulma, tell them what's really going on, just to make them freak out instead of acting so carefree. And you had to wear, you know, Whis, he's like, no, nah, don't, don't do that. You, you shouldn't do that. You're going to hear an earful from Bulma. Is it really worth Worth it. And amongst that scene with this little banter between, you know, Whis and Beerus, you have it to where Vegeta actually changes his daughter's diaper. Now, it doesn't seem like that's anything major, but I just once again want to point out Vegeta changing a diaper. Y yeah, you, that phrase, I, I cannot believe that's a thing. Vegeta helped his child by changing her diaper. Vegeta, you're such a good father. Why, why, why can't Goku be like you? I mean, I guess we had a good father in this episode, Piccolo. But I mean, still, Vegeta, just you're, you're a perfect example of a good father. What you did, I respect a lot of respect towards Vegeta. Just doing that. So the next scene to talk about, let's talk about the female legendary Super Saiyan. I'm assuming that's the female legendary Super Saiyan. Now I could be wrong here. If I am, I am. Forgive me. Now I think you say her name is a. Uh, Khalifa? Ka uh, Khalifa? I, th I think that's how you say her name, or uh, Cauliflower, or whatever. I, I, I don't know exactly her full name or how to pronounce it, but it's like Khalifa or something like that. Well, this character that's been building up for a good long while, that apparently is like the legendary Super Saiyan, everybody was just jumping for joy, like, holy crap, you know, a female Super Saiyan, this is gonna be insane, it's like a Broly character coming into the series, it was just a big talk of the town. I've been aware of it and all that, and I'm assuming this is the, the person because of the way the person looks, it's a, she's a female, and I mean, also, we know this person's going to be, you know, in the tournament of power, because we have it to where she's getting recruited in this episode, like it's setting up for it. So, the character overall, I don't really know what to say, because there's not really a whole lot that was revealed. Like, there, there's not, like, a lot of information at this time. Judging by what we saw in this episode, she seemed a little bit savage, like, she seemed a little bit more of a... I guess a strength person, and I realized I thought this person was going to be very passive, but it seems like Khalifa is not really going to be that passive type girl. She actually is going to probably be a savage Saiyan, which goes along with, you know, the Broly type mode she has. So I think that will be pretty interesting in future episodes. Now, we also get to find out a little bit more about Kaba and his, you know, overall backstory, kind of where he began, his senpai or sensei that taught him everything, and how now, you know, he was asking his sensei, like, hey, can you know, you join me, can you know, you help me out to save the universe and all that, and his sensei is basically saying, like, no, I, I can't really help you out because my leg is hurt and I'm just not like I used to be. So overall, that scene was just mainly set up for, you know, the Tournament of Power, but also getting to see the introduction of some of our opponents in the future episodes of Dragon Ball Super. Now, the last scene to talk about before I get into the real stuff I really want to get into, Yamcha's scene at the end of the episode. Whoa, oh my god. Yam oh my god. Like, oh. like Yamcha. You know what? Yamcha, you're so irrelevant, okay? You're so irrelevant that, honestly... I'm not even going to talk about it. That's just how relevant you are. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing on to the Gohan and Piccolo stuff. So, my boy Gohan, as a fan, as a person that collected the VHSs, yes, the dinosaurs, has collected this when I was younger. And seeing Gohan grow as a character from the Cell Saga, and you know, even before that, from 
the Saiyan Saga, to the Ginyu Saga, to the Frieza Saga, so forth, so on, seeing this character just mature throughout Dragon Ball Z, and reach that state to where he was when he fought Super Buu, it was such a wonderful moment for his character, and I've always been a fan of Gohan. He has been one of my personal favorite characters besides Vegeta. I I've just always loved Gohan. I've always loved his fights. When he ever was usually in a fight, they turned out to be some of the best stuff you would see in the series. And I was also one of those type of people that were very upset with how Gohan turned out. I mean, I've stated my piece on it enough in other episode reviews, separate videos, vlogs, all of that. I've said my piece. I've said that, you know, Gohan, he's just, I guess, not a fighter. He's accepted what he is, and I guess I'll have to live with it. It's upsetting, but I was willing to just move on because, I mean, if he's not a fighter, he's not a fighter. But I was sad because this character had so much potential. He was someone that was built up for so long. He, he was told that he could surpass, like, everyone that I was just so excited, you know, with Gohan in Dragon Ball Z. And with what happened to him in Dragon Ball Super, I was like... This kind of sucks. Like, I mean, I understand he's a family man now. I understand that, you know, he, he's not a fighter. He's a teacher and all that. I, I understand that. And I, I was willing to accept that. I, I was. And it saddened me, but I was willing to finally just move on and say I understand. But now we have this. We have hope. And along with this hope, we have character development taking place. And this entire arc right now, what we've seen thus far from Dragon Ball Super, it's really taken the time to do that. We've had Krillin get development or characterization, we've had Android 17 get character development and characterization, we've had 18 as well, we've had other characters on the side, and TN's next too, and when you look at all these little things that these characters have been getting throughout the episodes, it really makes me hyped up for this, and it gives me more than just hope. It lets me know that Gohan might finally really step in and be what maybe he was meant to be, because with all of this, all of this arc, what it's been trying to do is bring these characters that have not been in the spotlight for so long back into the series and allowing them to be front and center, like Piccolo, for instance. I mean, I like how relevant Piccolo was in Dragon Ball Z. Even though he wasn't as strong towards the end of it, he was still very relevant. And I'm just glad also he is being a part of this arc. Like, he's going to be playing a part and all that. He's going to be making plans and stuff, working with Gohan and Master Roshi and all of them. I'm very excited. And seeing Gohan get this development, it just, it goes along with what this arc has been doing thus far and why I'm so happy to be seeing this. I know many already are very upset with getting these little episodes and they want to just go headfirst into the Tournament of Power arc. I've seen enough of it. I've seen so many that have said that. Like, just get over this, like, just, let's move on, let's get to the Tournament of Power. That's what many have said to me, and I've seen it all over the place as well, and that really saddens me, because what this arc is doing is doing exactly what the fans of Dragon Ball Z were complaining about in the first place. We all were very upset with how some of our characters just got pushed to the side once, you know, Super Saiyan was introduced. A lot of the characters just shoved to the side and probably never really even shown that much anymore, and I'm just glad that Dragon Ball Super is bringing these characters back, giving them development, making them relevant, and th that's what's making this so enjoyable for me, and I'm gonna be completely honest with you, I haven't had this much fun with Dragon Ball since Dragon Ball Z, I mean, I've had fun with Dragon Ball Super, you know, being back, I just, I'm saying, this arc has made me feel so much nostalgia, it's made me fall in love with Dragon Ball all over again because of what it's about and all these characters that are now being so important to the plot. And I feel like the direction of this arc is probably the best arc of Super to date. And it just saddens me so many are writing this arc off or being upset with it because it's not getting to the Tournament of Power. We're not seeing Goku going in wrecking people or Vegeta or whatever. I I'm just glad we're seeing stuff like this because... Even though maybe Toei is using this to kind of slow the pacing down before they can have a longer arc, I still appreciate what I'm seeing here, and I want more of it. And I mean, we got Tien next. Tien and Master Roshi. That is awesome. Like, you know how long it's been? Like, yo! Like, seriously, Master Roshi and Tien. So... Yeah, just my point stands is, is I'm glad that we're seeing all this development take place. So, let's talk about Gohan's development, and it was very apparent, it was said multiple times throughout this episode, and this allows me to know that Gohan is definitely going to make a radical change 
probably in this arc. Piccolo points out something that has been a flaw in Gohan's character since the very beginning when he really obtained power. Every time Gohan has ever stepped into the territory of being very powerful, being one of the strongest people in the series, he's always grown very arrogant. He's someone that was controlled by his power, and like Piccolo said, he was drunk on this strength, and he allowed the power to get to his head, and then his opponent destroyed him, defeated him, because Gohan already assumed he won, but he let his guard down. And that's kind of what Piccolo was trying to teach him in this episode, that Gohan, every time you've ever obtained incredible power, if it was Cell or if it was Boo, you've always done it to where you get too arrogant, too cocky. And many have discussed this in the past. This is not something that is brand new. Many fans have brought this up and talked about it and said like Gohan is just acting more like a Saiyan when he gets into Super Saiyan or whatever because of this power. It's like a, a bad side to him and that's kind of one of the big things about Gohan's character that was a big flaw because every time he had power he just got too cocky and then he lost it. He threw it away basically. Kind of what happened in Cell. Even though he defeated Cell he kind of threw it away. Like Goku necessarily didn't need to die and Gohan just got too cocky. And then this as well with, you know, Boo, Super Boo. Gohan got too cocky. He could have defeated Boo real quickly. He played around with him. And then eventually, you know, Goten and uh, Trunks got absorbed. And then you had it to where Gohan got absorbed right after that. So when you look at both of these things, Gohan has that problem. And Piccolo points that out to Gohan. Gohan realizes this. And Piccolo's like, you need to stop being so arrogant. You need to change and Gohan's like I understand yes I do and that's kind of where you know a Piccolo scene and Gohan scene ends in this episode so Gohan's acknowledging his faults and that is a step towards character development but also it's allowing Gohan if he can overcome this he can be an incredible fighter because Gohan has been said many times I want to emphasize this once again it's been said many times Gohan could easily be stronger than our other characters if he really trained and went in as a fighter. And if he can get rid of that bad side to him, I, I can't imagine the limits of Gohan. I his limits would be ridiculous. He could easily obtain power that was unthinkable uh, in the past. So I'm excited to see where Gohan's character is going to go. Now, besides that, I just want to say, seeing Gohan back with Mystic, like his ultimate form and all that, or potential unleashed, I was so happy to see that. I, I was, I was like, oh my god, like, oh, like, oh my god, like, I, I knew this was gonna happen because of the opening song and all that, but just seeing it, just seeing Gohan tapping into that power, seeing this man transform into his best form he has, I'm like, oh my god, like, no, like, no, what's going on? Like, I was so hyped! I was so hyped! I was like, yes! My boy Gohan! And when he just transforms and all that, you just see the way he looks in the sky! The, the, the sky! The sky parts! Like, the sky parts, dude! Like, it was, it was raining and all that, it had this atmosphere to it throughout the episode, and when the sky just hearts soon as Gohan transforms and I'm like yo <laughs> hey my boy Gohan like yo like that was just such a great way to just say Gohan is back our boy Gohan our Gohan we know from Dragon Ball Z is back and I'm like thank you 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 oh yep that yes yes Oh, hit me right in the feels when I saw that. Oh my god. And then, another thing I really liked too was a little reference to the beginning part of Dragon Ball Z. Now, most likely not many really remember this or caught it in this episode, but I rewatched Dragon Ball Z so many times, like constantly. And I pretty much. I've seen the beginning of Dragon Ball Z so much, probably more than any other arc, actually, just because of how much I've rewatched it. And there is a certain reference, or kind of like a nod, to what happened with Gohan when he was younger and training under Piccolo. I don't know how many remember it, so I want to kind of point it out. There was a time when Gohan was a little kid and all that. He was training, he was in the wilderness by himself. 
Gohan was eating the dinosaur's tail. He was being ch chased by the dinosaur, and then, you know, he was eating his tail. Eventually got to the point as he got stronger, he was chasing the dinosaur, cutting off its tail, and eating it. That's how he was surviving. And that was something that was happening in the earlier parts of Dragon Ball Z. Like, the Saiyan Saga and all that. I don't know if it's the same dinosaur or not, but you see it a scene towards the end of the episode where the dinosaur wakes up and its tail's gone and you see Gohan cooking something. So I feel like that was a nod to the beginning of Dragon Ball Z with Gohan and Piccolo's training. And I was like, yo, that's very sweet to see. Just Piccolo always being a good father figure to Gohan. So another little thing I got a good kick out of was the scene to when Piccolo's arm got chopped off. That shocked me for a second because I was like, whoa, like, Piccolo just lost an arm, but then when his arm was flying, he shot Gohan in the back. It reminded me of Boo, and I, I like how Piccolo pretty much said that. He's like, you let your guard down like how you did with Boo, and that's something, what, like, Boo would do. He would, you know, have his arm detach him and just shoot someone in the back. We saw Boo actually do that, I think, a couple of times in the Boo saga, so when you look at that scene, I was very surprised to see Piccolo do that, but then I like how Gohan, even though he got this new status, he got wrecked, and I'm like, well, you still need to work on some things Gohan obviously he thought it was over which that's one of your faults but then I couldn't help but imagine Team Four Star at that moment like I could see Team Four Star for that scene just that scene alone doing a voiceover and saying DODGE as soon as Piccolo shoots <laughs> I could see that. I could see the comedy gold from that scene with Gohan getting shot in the back by Piccolo like DODGE so yeah episode overall wonderful wonderful episode i honestly cannot wait for next week because we're gonna have tian and then you know master roshi i'm excited to see these two characters in action i mean i really really have been waiting to see these characters as well in the spotlight and so let's see Let, let's see how toei handles it and judging by what they've done thus far i think i'll be very happy with whatever i see so let me know your thoughts in the comments below i love you all so much please be safe chibi out.